Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Still in bed. I promise I'm going to do videos sitting up pretty soon here, but I do spend a lot of time in bed still as I continue to heal from this crazy major back surgery of mine that has some titanium in my lower spine. So it's super crazy. And this video is for you twin flames out there. And I want to talk about not settling, not settling. So I've had a few discussions with people that have left some comments on some of my videos and I want to expand on this topic, the topic of not settling. So for those of you watching, I'm going to assume a lot of you are chasers or at one time with your counterpart in this situation, you chased pretty hardcore, meaning you, as they continued to disconnect and text less and less and be less responsive, that you started to be more of it, tried to communicate more with them and ask what's going on and that kind of thing. And it's so tough in a situation where you feel unbelievably connected to someone and they start to disconnect and disappear. And what was once an amazing situation is now turning into a most difficult situation because you, you become very used to your counterpart after you've been connecting over and over. It be, it, that bliss is like a drug. And when, when he or she starts to drift away, run away, it's extremely difficult to just say, oh, that person's not showing enthusiasm for my life. I'm not going to talk to them. That's really hard to do in that moment. Your instinct instead, and it was the same for me, is to try and reach out and get clarity and to have a conversation with that person. But here's the truth. Here is the hard truth. Regardless of the immense connection and the depth of it, your counterpart in this situation is deciding to disconnect. That is the action they are taking. And the most difficult thing to do is to look at the actions of another person when you have heavy amounts of emotion invested and involved. And one of the things that happened for me in my situation that after I chased, and I, I probably chased for just over a year, periodically, I finally got to a point where I set a new standard for myself. And this standard is now one of my core values, one of my core statements about me and my life and what I will and will not tolerate. And that statement is this. I will only accept people in my life who are enthusiastic and happy to be in it, regardless of who they are. Friend, um, acquaintance, um, really good friend, uh, whoever it is, the, even the twin flame. Whoever it is, that is my standard. And this standard now supersedes, takes precedence over my emotions even, or my desires, the standard of what I expect. And the great thing about this is, you know, I'm doing this video about um, not settling. Now, when you incorporate this standard and, and watch prior videos of mine, I talk about integrating, like you can have knowledge of not settling for things but until that gets integrated into your nervous system, like for me, I always continued to reach out and chase until I finally got to the point and a lot of the dating I did helped as I continued to go through that and have experiences. And I finally got to a point where now my standard is that. And the way that that standard happened was I acted in a way that that was my standard even when my emotions were telling me the opposite. That's how it works. And the beautiful thing about getting there is now you will not tolerate people who just disconnect from you and stop responding and doing things like that. Because now you start to elevate your value and self-worth because of your discipline 
your discipline and integrating that self-worth and not settling. So that's one of the things I would look, look inwardly at your behavior and look outwardly at the actions of your counterpart or other people you might happen to be seeing. If those people are not responsive to you, if they're not happy to see you, if they don't reach out to you themselves every once in a while, these are clues about how people are viewing you and how the value they're placing on you. And you have to ask yourself, do you want people in your life who think little of you? Or do you want people who, when you're in touch with them, they're like, hell yeah, I want to talk to you. I want to interact with you. And you hold this as your standard. And this is one of the ways in which you grow from this twin flame experience. It's like a breakup on steroids. It really is. It's like the most immense, crazy breakup of hell that you'll ever go through. But if you can get past that and start integrating some of these things into your body, one of which is not settling and having a boundary on what you will and will not tolerate from people, you'll become a more valuable person. This will translate into other things. If you own a business, you'll only accept clients who are going to be enthusiastic about your product. If you're an employee, you will not accept being treated less than what you deserve. And you will, in fact, you will negotiate. You will stick up for yourself. You'll, if you do well on a project, you will show what you've done well. And you will demand, not in a brutal sort of way, but just in a knowing your worth sort of way, what you deserve and what your value is. This will affect all areas of your life. So for those of you in your situation, especially those of you who are still trying to reach out to your counterpart and they are not being responsive, I challenge you, I challenge you to write down on a piece of paper or on your computer what you will and will not tolerate in your life, what you, what your expectations are for people and how they will interact with you. And do this and you'll become a stronger and greater person through this experience. I wish you all the best going through this experience. I think it's awesome to see so many of you commenting and sharing and and to know that other people have gone through this and are going through it, whatever stage you're at. They will, it's amazing to see. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.